Here for an exchange exclusive is Ron Koshevsky, the chairman and CEO of Stiefel Financial. It's great to have you here. Welcome. You know, Kelly, I, just great to be here. You know, we spent so much time. Remote. It, it reminds me of the pandemic, you know, the dog days when it would be, you know, 2020 and 2021. And it's just a reminder of, in some ways, yeah. how far we've come. Exactly. Is your firm, what's the deal with work from home these days and how much employees are back in the office? Uh, but pretty much back in the office. I mean, we we're, we're, we learned to uh, the new style and some people work from home, but generally we're back at work. We, we have to be. Are uh, you hybrid? Is it four days? Is there some flexibility? It, it depends. It, it's uh, Officially, we're back five days, yeah. but we work with people, of course. Why do you think it is that financial firms like yourselves, Goldman, the rest, why is it so important for your industry to basically be fully back in person five days a week? We've seen many others that seem comfortable to have three or fewer days like that. It really is that we're an apprentice shop. We teach our people our business, okay? You don't learn it uh, in school. You learn finance, but you don't learn investment banking. You don't learn all the things that you need to do. We're a human capital business, and we train our people at work, not by Zoom. Right. Even people think it's a lot of spreadsheet jockeying and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so let's turn back. There's the financial sector down half a percent today. And every time you turn around, there seems to be another headline or, or headwind. And, and the capital one in particular, you know, in the longer run, seems like it could weigh on the shares. Just talk about what you think is going on with the economics of the business right now. Well, it's a lot of bad news, right? And uh, but I think that financials, as your previous guest said, that they're they're inexpensive. The cyclicals are inexpensive. A lot of the financials are trading at single-digit multiples. Uh, the the banking industry is very well capitalized, but there are headwinds. Uh, but it's to me, it's not like Moody's told me anything that I didn't know. Sure. Deposit costs are rising. Deposits are more scarce. You're going to get some commercial real estate losses. These things are all in the market. Uh, the one thing I would tell you that I that I think people need to think about is, uh, you know, on July 27th, that capital uh, increase, about 19 percent for the biggest banks. I think that's a big deal. And it's going to personally, I think it's going to put a crimp, crimp on lending. Talk more about that. But what does it mean? When, and, and for how long period do you think that might put a crimp on things? Well, I think it starts now. People say, oh, you can phase these things in. Well, in our business, uh, you start phasing in immediately, all right? It just, there is no such thing. And uh, so I, I believe that most banks are going through their lending book and deciding uh, where the risk uh, adjusted capital is. And frankly, uh, is it just going to make it harder for our borrowers in general to find credit? Is the, are these two things related? The fact that financials are cheap and that they have to hold more capital and if you, you know, some of the people I talk to are worried that in order to fund the deficit down the road, they're basically going to try to shove all of this paper onto bank balance sheets by requiring higher capital level, financial repression, in other words. So when I look at it and I go, well, yeah, they're, they're trading at low multiples, but is that because the market's sniffing out that the new normal for banks just might not be a one of, har of high ROIs for the next, you know, period of time? I think that, look, I think uh, in any capital system, you need a strong, healthy banks, and we're going to have that. But what the banking sy system is today, it's just a preview of what's going on. It's the first industry that really had to re-rate to 5% interest True. rates. And the economy, today, the market, you've seen the market, we think it's going to move sideways. Why, why would you invest in the equities today? when you can get 5% risk-free. That basic comment is across almost any business you want to talk mm -hmm. about. It's, it's a new risk-free rate that is causing, uh, you know, the private sponsors don't want to take their companies public because the valuations have to be lower. But you can trace it all back to 5% interest rates. In other words, people go, hey, if I can get 5% for doing nothing, why go through the trouble, uh, you know, taking a company public or all of that for a return that might not be too much higher?